salvation. The acutely dynamic act of snatching others by force from serious peril. In its most basic term, salvation is the saving of a life from death or harm. Salvation includes deliverance from the penalty and power of sin. Old Testament for Israelite faith. Salvation never carried a purely secular sense of deliverance from death or harm. Because Yahuwah and no other is the source of salvation, any saving act, even when the focus is preservation of life or release from national oppression, is a spiritual event. The primary saving event in the Old Testament is the Exodus 14, verse 13, which demonstrated both Yahuwah's power to save and Yahuwah's concern for his oppressed people. Exodus 34, verses 6 through 7. Israel recounted Yahuwah's deliverance from Egyptian slavery in the Passover ritual, Exodus 12, verses 1 through 13. In Sermon Nehemiah 9, verses 9 through 11. And in Psalms, for example, Psalm 74, verses 12 through 13. Psalm 78, verse 13, and 42 through 54. Psalm 105, verses 26 through 38. The retelling of the Exodus event and of Yahuwah's provision during the wilderness years. Nehemiah 9, verses 12 through 21. Psalm 78, verses 14 through 29. Psalm 105, verses 39 through 41. Psalm 114, verse 8, provided a pre president for sharing other stories of national and even personal deliverance. Psalm 40, verse 10. Psalm 71, verse 15. Some argue that the Old Testament does not link salvation with the forgiveness of sins. The recurring cycle of national sin foreign oppression, national repentance, and salvation by a God-sent judge, however, witnesses the link linkage. Judges 3, 7 through 9, 12, 15. Judges 4th chapter, 1 through 4. Judges 6, verses 1, 7, 12. Also Nehemiah 9, verse 27, Psalm 106, verse 34 through 46. Yahuwah's sending of a deliverer is in effect Yahuwah's act of forgiveness of the penitent. You can compare Psalm 79, verse 9, and Psalm 85, verse 4. Psalms 51, verse 12 perhaps provides the best Old Testament case for personal salvation from sin. In the Old Testament, salvation primarily concerns Yahuwah's saving act within human history. The early prophets anticipated Yahuwah's salvation to be realized in the earth's renewed fruitfulness and the rebuilding of the ruined cities of Israel. Amos 9, verses 13 through 15. Salvation would extend to all nations who would stream to Zion for instruction in Yahuwah's ways. Isaiah 2, Verses 2 through 4, Micah 4, verses 1 through 4, Zechariah 8, verses 20 through 23. The prophets also hinted of a salvation that lies outside history. For example, Isaiah 51, verse 6. The larger context of Isaiah 25, verse 9 reveals that Yahuwah's salvation embraces abundant life. Chapter 25, verse 6. And the end of death. Chapter 25, verse Verse 7, tears and disgrace. Chapter 25, verse 8. Throughout most of the Old Testament, salvation is a corporate or community experience. The Psalms, however, are especially concerned with the salvation of the individual from the threat of enemies. Psalm 13, verse 5. Psalm 18, verse 2 and 35. Psalm 24, verse 5. Though the focus is negative, Salvation involves foiling the enemy's wrongdoing. There are hints of a positive content of salvation that embraces prosperity, as in Psalm 18, verse 35. The
The Psalms are especially interested in Yahuwah's salvation of the upright in heart. Psalm 36, verse 10, or righteous. Psalm 37, verses 19 through 40, who rely on Yahuwah for deliverance. Psalm 51, verse 12, more than any other Old Testament text associates personal salvation with a conversion experience. Renewed joy of salvation accompanies Yahuwah's creation of a new heart and right spirit and assurance of God's abiding presence. Yahushua's earthly ministry made salvation a present reality for his generation. Yahushua's healing ministry affected, affected salvation from disease. Mark 5 verse 34, Mark 10 verse 52, Luke 17 verse 19. Yahushua offered God's forgiveness to hurting people. Mark 2, verse 5, Luke 7, verse 50. He assured a repentant Zacchaeus that today salvation has come to this house. Luke 19, verse 9. Through such encounters, Yahushua fulfilled the goal of his ministry, to seek and to save that which was lost. Luke 19, verse 10. The apex of Messiah's completed work is his sacrificial death. Messiah came to give his life. A ransom for many. Mark 10 verse 45. Messiah entered once for all into the holy place with his own blood. Thus obtaining eternal redemption. Hebrews 9 verse 12. A Messiah who was reconciling the world to himself. Not counting their trespasses against them. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 19. Here ransom, redemption and reconciliation are synonyms for salvation. With reference to Messiah's atoning work, the believer can confess, I was saved when Yahushua died for me. Messiah's present saving work primarily concerns Messiah's role as mediator. Romans 8 verse 34, Hebrews 7 verse 25, 1 John 2 verse 1. Messiah's future saving work chiefly concerns Messiah's coming again to bring salvation to those who eagerly await him. Hebrews 9 verse 28. And salvation from the wrath of Yahuwah's final judgment. Romans 5 verse 9 through 10. Though Messiah's sacrificial death is central, Messiah's saving activity extends to the whole of his life, including his birth. Galatians 4 verses 4 through 5. Resurrection. Romans 4 verse 25. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 17. And ascension. Romans 8 verse 34. The believer's experience also offers a perspective for viewing salvation. The experience again embraces the past, present, and future. Yahuwah's initial work in the believer's life breaks down into various scenes. Conviction of sin, John 16, verse 8. Repentance, turning from sin to Yahuwah, Luke 15, verse 7, and verse 10. 2 Corinthians 7, verse 10. Faith, which involves commitment of one's whole life to Messiah, John 3, verses 16 and 36. Confession of Messiah as Lord. Acts 2, verse 21. Romans 10, 9 through 10. Scripture uses a wealth of images to describe this act. New birth. John 3, 3. Titus 3, verse 5. New creation. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Adoption. Romans 8, verse 15. Galatians 4. Verse 4 through 5, Ephesians 1, verse 5, empowerment to be Yahuwah's children, John 1, verse 12, the status of saints, 1 Corinthians 1, verse 2, 2 Corinthians 1, verse 1. This initial work in the believer's life is often termed justification. Justification, however, also embraces Yahuwah's final judgment, Romans 2, verse 13, Romans 3, Verses 20 and 30. Yahuwah's ongoing work in the believer's life concerns the process of maturing in Messiah. Hebrew 2 verse 3. 1 Peter 2 2. 2 Peter 3 18. Growing in Messiah's service. 1 Corinthians 7 20 through 22. And experiencing victory over sin through the power of the Holy Spirit. Romans 7 through 8. Here sin remains in reality the believer's life. Romans 7, verse Romans 7, 
1 John 1, 8 through 2. Verse 1, the believer is caught in between what God has begun and what God is yet to complete. Philippians 1, verse 6, Philippians 2, verse 12.